like I missed another one, but I can't scroll back that far. This one's um, for your body now. Let's go ahead and bring Jeff in with the drone news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Ladies and gentlemen, all the drone news you'd ever want to know about. Let's go to the drone newsroom now with Jeff Sales. What's happening, Jeff? Well, it's been a busy news week. Uh, not as much as we've seen in the past, but... I guess an interesting uh, amount of news. Hmm. Um, I want to preface this first one. This is fake. It is not real. Okay. And I want to make that very clear because a viral clip of an Amazon blimp releasing drones came out on April fool's day. People started thinking this thing was real. Yeah. It's the sound that gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. daughter Judy, right? Right, right, right. There. Man, that's was, uh, it looks actually, real. Yeah, this was actually put together by uh, a, a guy in Japan who used information from an honest to God Amazon patent. So, this is actually an idea that Amazon has. So, there is some reality to it, but it's not real. Let me let me bring it to the part where that gave it away for me when they do this fake focus in, in and out of focus thing, yeah. as if the camera you're using didn't focus on something that's here it comes right there as it yeah. gave it away for me that fake defocus effect there but, but you know what i have never seen a cooler looking blimp than that it's actually like a quadcopter blimp it's got, yeah that looks like it has four turbines on the bottom that's a really cool looking blimp i I'll, I'll tell you guys a quick story i actually got to ride in the goodyear blimp one time me too man really okay. yeah in birmingham alabama it was it's it was awesome isn't it it was the weirdest part is it takes off straight up like it just kind of rotates goes up and then when it lands it it noses down and just goes straight down it was yeah it was wild and the, and the pilot uses like wheels it looks like he's in a wheelchair but he's using these wheels oh, yeah, next yeah. to him yeah, to steer it like and, this and everybody's voice sounded like this on the thing too. no <laughs> he must have had a leak uh, yeah. uh, Megan uh, Perone, ten dollar super chat. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, Megan. Uh, by the way, I, I neglected to mention our guest tonight, uh, uh, Ian Titchener. He is standing by. Uh, we're going to call him in a little bit. He's in the UK. He's a uh, uh, UK flight certification school instructor, and uh, we're going to talk to him about things and stuff and whatnot. And uh, it's one thirty a.m there so uh, well, yeah. very nice of him to stay up late isn't it <coughs> no, i'll say i'll, I'll, I'll you guys have uh I have, a, I have a blimp envy now so you guys <laughs> have uh, got me beat there uh going on the basis of the whole hoax slash fake news thing we'll go on to the next story which is a year ago we reported on uh an airplane incident with a drone uh, it happened in Australia with a guy named Rod Vaughn, who happened to be some, I guess, important journalist or or somebody famous there, who crashed his plane. The CAA has finished their investigation and have concurred that a drone was not the cause of the accident. In fact, there was no drone involved at all. Uh, poor windscreen maintenance uh, led to the windscreen failing on the plane while it was in flight, causing him to have his accident. Mm. Okay. But of course, naturally, it's much better if you just blame a drone. Right. Once again, drones are vilified uh, uselessly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. When is that going to stop? When is uh, that going to stop? Never. Yeah, never. Uh, so, uh, Ken, you shared this with me, and apparently uh, this was something that was pretty important because the European Parliament is banning memes. Oh, yeah. Why would they do that? <laughs> apparently, they have a copyright directive. Um, that basically allows uh, search engines and aggregators to pay a link tax on, uh, on, on I guess, content that users upload. Um, so if you have a, a meme featuring a picture or somebody that the EU owns rights to, uh, the copyright holder can make a claim on YouTube against you for that content. Oh, well, I probably should stop showing these memes then yeah <laughs> sorry eu <laughs> yeah that's well, ridiculous also... it's just uh, another <laughs> another indication that uh lawmakers have no sense of humor uh, you're such a meme -y. you're such a meme -y. ah there you go 
Yeah. And a couple well, of the these. FAA decided they wanted to get in on the mix because they've had, a, a, I guess, a new set of guidelines for drone pilots uh, and an effort to go after the risky operators. Um, so they uh, have increased the enforcement protocols on on the, I guess, people doing bad things with drones uh, due to the number of illegal operations that have happened here within the United States. Okay. Uh, quickly, um, uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Jerry Freeman, $10 super chat for those uh, look nice headphones. I'm sure they're great Her heron aids. Oh, that's, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, a wow. Her a heron aid. Hey, a what's heron -aid. that you say? I need a heron aid. I like that. Very nice. Golf clap for you. There you go. <laughs> so basically the way this is going to come down is that in 2018 and 2019, there was no enforcement done by the FAA on uh, that re that resulted in any financial or punitive uh, consequences to uh, pilots that were caught violating airspace. That's going to change. They're going to start going after people and they're going to start in doing more enforcement actions. So expect to to see that start uh, ramping up okay um so next in the news we had uh, a wilsonville fire that was caught uh i guess the, the the news company there did a video for us of the aftermath of this fire this is terrible nobody was injured in this um basically it was a construction site that had caught fire and the nearby condos uh went up in flames uh, as well, uh, it's just a, an amazing bit of footage uh, for uh, all the damage that happened in a very short period of time. And you can wow. see that the streets are actually a fire break because it's kind of contained within that one block. And I mean, sure, some of, there was some heat damage, but the flames didn't get across the street. And, yeah, and, and that's no. good that it didn't spread too terribly, but wow, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's really good they didn't use that flammable concrete. You know, a, yeah. lot of cities, a lot of cities were using that for a while. Oh, Not yeah. Flame, the flame creep. <laughs> yeah, old flame creep. Got to watch that. <laughs> flame creep. Oh, but Kelly, if, if you would, uh, just for a second, could you turn your microphone down just a little? It's still kind of distorted. Hey, I'll tell you what. Give me a sec. I'll go grab. I have another one like five feet away. Okay. I'll go get my other mic. It'll be better. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Keep on with the news. All right. Cool. Okay. Well, in that case, then, we talked, uh, I guess, a couple of months back about NASA using uh, drones with SETI, where they would fly through caverns using the LIDAR, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, they've taken that same technology now. The CMU team uh, has developed a robot and a drone system that they're going to use to uh, in mine rescues, which I think is a, a fantastic new way. It gives us access to places that the ground robot can't go. We may encounter staircases that could be blocked with debris. And the challenge is to be able to get through a one meter by one meter opening. The instruments that the drones are carrying are stereo cameras, real sense cameras. Those provide three dimensional space information back to us, photographic information. We're also carrying Velodyne LIDAR systems that can map three-dimensionally the areas that the robots are nearby. And those maps can be fed back to the base station so that the base station user gets a real-time map display and is able to send commands to the robot if it needs to, to either change course, to launch the drone. For the most part, we don't know what we're going to see. So we need those instruments to be able to do that as well as to locate artifacts, humans, and other things that may help us once we're inside the mine. You see how the propellers are configured? Isn't yeah. that isn't that interesting? How I, and I think that makes it more agile in uh, when you're going slowly. Um, you wouldn't want a photography drone necessarily to have that configuration, but if you're going to try to work your way around a space inside, that's a really that gives you more vectors. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is really, really an impressive device. And yeah, the 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 way that they've got the the motors kind of cocked eyed um, adds to the stability. Of course, they don't need it to go fast, um, but they need it to be accurate and and be able to get good data from it. So right, really excited to see how this uh, transposes in the future. Yep. 
Um, so in the news also, there was a, a funeral recently in Brooklyn uh, for a rabbi that had passed away, and they had a huge turnout of people that came out for uh, this, this particular funeral procession. And somebody decided they wanted to fly their drone over it, which, of course, we know flying over crowds is sort of a no-no. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, the, the drone fell from the sky uh. and actually hit a female cop in the face. In the face? Yep. That's horrible. The, per uh, the person uh, was arrested and charged with assault and reckless endangerment and spent the night in jail. We're, we're, I have a... Uh, an email from someone who sent in some video of someone who is violating some rules by flying over people with an Inspire One. We'll share that here in a little bit. Kelly, you doing all right? <laughs> Mr. Noisy? Okay. <laughs> the cord goes right in there. He, he, he had it all set up. I mean, it was looking good and everything, and then the internet, you know, and then my, my screwed up. If you're still watching... By now, I, I, I imagine, what, we got like 10 people watching? Thank you. Thank 285. So 285. How do I sound, by the way? Is uh, that turn better? Down a little bit. Turn the mic down a little bit. All right. Let me find the gain switch. Yeah. Gain. Gain. How's that? One, two, three. One, two, three. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down a little bit more. Okay. Right One, there. One, two, three. Right there. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, back to Jeff. All right, so we also talked uh, in the news recently about the AK-47 drone. Oh, um, man, this is they've crazy. Got some, they've got some new video out because they've modified the drone now to fire shotgun rounds. Oh, so scary. Any other information, Jeff? Um, this particular uh, drone, of course, obviously the way that it takes off and lands is, is, is pretty neat. Uh, they're planning on putting flamethrowers on these. They're having all sorts of great ideas um, to, I guess, maximize the damage capability of this. But this one fires a semi-automatic shotgun, and it actually takes out drones in this video. They actually used it as proof of concept. Look at that. They just shot something out of the sky. I totally agree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, gun aside, it's a pretty cool bit of tech. You know, you remove the whole lethal aspect of it, and it's kind of nifty. Watch how it lands. Yeah, I love the landing. I totally wouldn't fly something that could kill me. <laughs> but uh, it is impressive nonetheless. Well, for those that. of you in the audience that's interested, it's a Vepper 12 shotgun. It's a semi-automatic uh, version of the uh, Vepper 12. Yes, and it's available at theywillputyouunderthejail.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, okay, so the last bit of news is uh, is something that's close to my heart because I'm a huge Marvel fan, a big Deadpool fan. Oh, um, I think I know what's coming. But <laughs> yeah, uh, and of course my birthday is coming up. I just want to hand to everybody out there. Uh, DJI Tello has released the Iron Man edition of their Tello drone, and <laughs> I want one so bad. <laughs> ordered mine, ordered mine uh, day before yesterday. Or Did you? Whenever I got the email. Yeah. You know, make me jealous. Hey, you know what? Actually, Jeff, I, I I offered to give it to Ken, and he said he said no. Um, <laughs> he said it's for nerds and losers. I did I not. I did losers. not say that. I did not say that. I said you would probably get more benefit from giving away on your channel. Well, Be well maybe because I should just give it to Jeff. Because that, that, you that would make more he, sense. Because yeah, you yeah. need you need help with your channel. Clearly, you need help with your channel by giving stuff away. You're you're just you're. How do you eat? I don't understand. It just doesn't here's, make any. <laughs> here's why that thing is cool. I mean, obviously the Iron Man part is really awesome, but the the coolest part about that is this is like the start of this collaboration with DJI and and brands that I think could do a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is this is Marvel, Intel, and DJI all working together, and this particular version of the drone works with like four or five different applications that allow you to program it not only from your computer but also from like a portable device, etc. I mean. This is 
the coolest bit of tech that they've done with the Tello, and I duh, want one. What, what is it gonna? What is it? What's gonna be the difference between the regular Tello and this one? The, the paint job. The paint and, job. Okay. Software. Will that little button on top glow like uh, on the on the suit? Will it glow? You think? Uh, Ed, Ed, did you watch Jeff? Did you watch the little promo video on the DJI site? Yeah, it, I, like, I watched the where promo it all kind of comes together. It looks illuminated, but I'm I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, it's probably just it's probably just drawn on with uh with like a luminescent uh, it's, it's, paint. It's glow in the dark. You hide, hold it under a light for an hour, and then you go fly outside, and it glows. Now, one question I have because I've never actually had a Tello. Um, this says on the DJI site that it comes with quick release blades. Does all of the Tellos have quick release blades? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you can pull them right off. I've never had to replace mine, but I will say um, it's interesting. I was telling Ken this day we talked yesterday or two days ago. Um, Tello is one of the most um, searched for terms on my site right now on, on YouTube. So people are very interested in it. It's a great little drone. It doesn't have GPS, but the um, the optical recognition on it is really good. And the app, it's one of the few drones I've flown using an app that's actually worthwhile. Well, I mean, Artco has one. I know that several other uh, YouTubers that I've talked to have them. They all say nothing but great things about them. And, uh, and I've always wanted to have one, but I didn't really like those. This one, I'm absolutely in love with. I desperately want this drone. All right, I, I saw somebody do a super chat saying we should uh, we should raise enough funds, 129 bucks. Uh, so I'm I'm all for that. I, I, if we can, oh yeah, I, Dan, Dan it, Castle. It's all, it's all Ken, Ken's money, so it's up to him. Dan Castle towards Jeff Tello. Yes, uh, people don't realize this, but uh, I do actually pay Jeff to do the news. Do I not? Yes, you do. I do, and you it comes. Pay him in Tellos. I, I well, I don't pay him <laughs> Tello money, but I do pay him something to do this because. It Thank does, you very much, Kelly. I does appreciate your support. Take a <laughs> lot of his time, so please check out Drone Book. And uh, where, yes. what, what else you got going on? People should check out your channel. You're loading up a bunch of your old newscasts. Yeah, I have uh, the newscasts from the previous episodes uh, have been streaming slowly but surely, day by day, into the into the uh, channel. Um, they're all pre-programmed, so for the rest of this week and probably into next week, uh, there'll be new episodes showing up at noon every day. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for being on with us, and uh, I appreciate you, and everyone does, and you're the best. Hey, hey before Jeff goes, mm. um, Ken, you mentioned you mentioned you might make a road trip soon. Uh, can you can you mention about that? Yes, sometime in May, I'll be heading to uh, the the woodlands in yes. Texas, yeah. <clears throat> and hopefully, we're so all going to meet up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, will, you, will you be here on a Thursday? How cool would it be to do TNL uh, live from somewhere? Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Chris, Chris Rollins and uh, hopefully uh, Kelly Shores and uh, Jeff Sills will all get together. And uh, the reason why I'm coming down there is, uh, one, to visit my dad and make sure I'm still in the will. And then, uh, two, uh, is to shoot a 50 caliber gun at the police department at a drone laden with tannerite. Yeah, and film it in slow motion. Heaven. So that's going to be awesome. All right, so uh, we've got uh, Ian uh, standing by. I have to say goodbye to you, Jeff. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. All right. Jeff is awesome. He's the best. <laughs>